Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive your word. We know it's being written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We thank you for all that you bring forth. We will take hold of it, be doers of it. It will bring forth much fruit. Thank you for all that you accomplished this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, if you would. We began talking to you this morning on the subject of the mind. Very important subject. We talked about how we obtain the mind of Christ. God wants us to obtain the mind of Christ. We pointed out here in Proverbs 23, verse 7, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. We pointed out that there is a mistake in the translation, and as we said this morning, we're not trying to down translations. We want to make sure we're looking at truth and understanding truth. When you put the cursor over the word heart, if you're here for the first time, in the lower window, there's information that we put up when we put a cursor over a word. This particular word here in the Hebrew is nefesh, and it means soul. The other word, heart, you would think it would be the same Hebrew word, but it's not. It's the word lab, which does mean heart of the inner man. What it should be translated is this, whereas he thinketh in his soul, which is the area of your intellect and your will, your emotions, and what, what, why do we, how do we think in that soulish realm? It's with our mind. So what it's talking about is thinking with your mind. Young's literal translation corrects that error and points out that it is referring to the soul. So as you're thinking in the soul, which would be in the area of your mind, so are you. That tells you something. If we're not thinking right, we're in trouble. We've got to be thinking correctly, so that however you're thinking is the way you're going to be. Well, we want to get God's thoughts in us. We want to get His Word in us. And we pointed out that you and I need to get the Word of God in us and get the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ because God wants us to know Him. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. This is the word dianui, dianui which means a way of thinking in the mind. It's from the main word noi, which means mind. He's given us a way of thinking in the mind that we may know him that is true. That tells us something. If we are thinking correctly, we're going to know the Lord. If we're not thinking correctly, we're not going to know him because he's the word to know his ways. And we pointed out the scripture over in Isaiah in chapter 50, Five, Isaiah chapter 55, where we saw in verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. We can't be having unrighteous thoughts. We've got to be thinking righteous thoughts. It says, let him return unto the Lord. He will have mercy upon him to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Well, we want our thoughts to become like Him. That's why we've got to get our thoughts changed. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God's word is a revelation of his thoughts. And his word comes into you. The word in your mind will produce the thoughts of the Lord in you. Because he wants you to have his thoughts. And we pointed out in the New Testament today. That you and I now, in the New Testament. God takes his word and he writes it and puts it within you. Hebrews 8 Verse 10 speaks of the covenant in these days. This is the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. He takes his word, his laws, spiritual laws, and he's writing it and putting it in you, in your heart and in your mind. We see the opposite said in Hebrews 10, verse 16. This is the covenant that I'll make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I'll put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. 
So God takes his word, he puts it and writes it in your heart, he puts it and writes it in your mind. Otherwise, we can have his thoughts in us because his words contain his thoughts. And as we get our mind renewed to the truth, we're going to come to the place of having the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw scripture over in Romans 12. That's important to make note of. In verse 2, it says, Be not conformed to this world. The word world actually means age. Be not conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The transformed is a word metamorpho in the Greek, which where we get our word metamorphosis. If you remember from science class, metamorphosis is the process where the caterpillar is changed into a butterfly. That's a change in species. That's exactly what's going to happen to you and me through the renewing of our mind. We're going to be changed from a carnal-minded person to a spiritual-minded person, from worldly-minded to heavenly-minded on the things of the Lord. So we're going to be transformed, how? By the renewing of our mind. And this isn't just getting a bunch of facts in their mind. This is a total renovation. It means to renovate or a complete change. Absolute change. That's what God wants. That's why we've got to get everything that's been in us, the way of life that we have lived before we're born again, it's all going to be changed. We're going to get God's thoughts in us. We're going to learn God's ways. And we pointed out that because of the fact that we are born from the dead, with Christ. Colossians 3.1, if you've been risen with Christ spiritually from the dead, seek those things that are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We want to seek the things above. Set your affection to gain understanding in your mind on things above, not on the things on the earth. It's important that we get our mind renewed to the Word of God so we have His thoughts in us. We talked about many things this morning about how we obtain the mind of Christ and principles that are important. Tonight we're going to talk more specifically about causes and effects of destruction that come into the mind. We must not give place to the enemy because you must understand the battleground is in the mind. The devil will try to bring evil thoughts, thoughts contrary to the word, into you to deceive you from walking in God's ways. We see back in Genesis chapter 6, the situation at the very beginning there, when we see right before the flood, verse 5, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination and the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Continually. That's how bad and how depraved he got. God wants us to know that he doesn't want us he wants us to have the mind of Christ. He wants us to think good things. He wants us to have thoughts that are going to be thinking on the things that God wants, good things, not evil things whatsoever in our life. God wants us to get to the place where we take every thought captive. We talked about that scripture, which we'll look at it again later this, this evening. But we see in Genesis 50, verse 20, he said, As for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. God turned the things around. But notice, he had thought evil against him. God does not want you to think any evil th thoughts against any person. Do not let yourself get into resentments, bitterness, retaliation, hatred, want to get back at someone, unforgiveness, any evil things against someone. Do not let that happen. Wishing a bad thing upon someone? No, never. Never have evil thoughts in your mind against another person. We see over in Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 6, this is where they were building the walls. Nehemiah came to build, restore the building of the walls of Jerusalem. And the enemies were trying to stop them. This is all a type of God is at work building the things in your life, and the devil will try to stop you from seeing the works of God be accomplished in your life. Verse 1, it came to pass when Samballat, Tobiah, and Geshem, the Arabian, the rest of their enemies, heard that I builded the wall, and there was no breach left therein. A breach is a gap, a break, which would be a type of the fact that you've dealt with sin. You're not yielding to sin any longer. You've cut out all the areas of sin. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. The Samballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages of the plain of Ono. And they thought 
to do me mischief. This is the enemy. He thinks and plans and purposes to do evil things against you. Don't just think you're in this world and just you and, and whatever God does in your life and that's it. No, the devil's here and he hates you and he wants to steal, kill, and destroy in your life and he thinks to do evil things. Here, he thought to do them mischief. We must understand that the devil wants to get to your thoughts and he wants to bring evil thoughts into you. In Psalms 56, verse 5, this is what the enemy tries to do. Every day they rest my words. They want to get a hold of your words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Every thought that is evil that comes into your mind, it is not coming from God. It is coming from the devil or working through the flesh, which is in league with the devil because it has not been changed. And so these thoughts against you for evil, you've got to understand, you've got to really govern your mind. You've got to watch your thoughts. You can't let the devil get to your mind. He'll start bringing thoughts into you and trying to affect you. So you'll start speaking those things, act upon them, make choices, start thinking, making decisions, forming opinions, all because of thoughts that come into your mind. You want to be sure that you have the thoughts of the Lord. The devil will also try to bring hurt against you in your life. We see in Psalm 73, verse 16, he said, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, too painful to look at the situation, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood I thy end, I their end. In other words, the enemy was bringing evil things against him, and he thought it was too painful for him to deal with the situation. Until he got in the presence of God, the sanctuary of God, then he understood what, this, what was going on. You need to get in the presence of God and get God's insight on anything that's coming at you in your life because God will show you what the enemy's up to and he will show you how to overcome and conquer everything that the enemy brings against you in your life. We need to get in the presence of God so we can get revelation from the Lord, so we can hear from Him and see things clearly from His vantage point so we aren't deceived by the lying thoughts that the enemy brings. You must also understand that the thoughts that come to you, they can come from the flesh, which has not been changed. You're not to have a fleshly mind, one run by the human nature. Psalms 94, verse 11. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man, but their vanity, their vanity, they're not the truth. They're vain. They're all based on lustful desires, all based on temporal things, not understanding the ways of the Lord. The thoughts of man are all vain. God does not want us to walk in those ways. He wants us to walk in the ways of the Lord. That's why we're going to get the Word in us and get the, His thoughts in us. In every situation, you need to be thinking, what does the Word say about this? Instead of just making decisions or actions or speaking things contrary to what the Word says by not even acknowledging what the Word says. Just whatever thoughts comes to your mind and so you just, just speak it or act upon it or carry on about it. No, that's going to bring destruction to you. We must guard ourselves and watch that we do not let these kind of thoughts come into us. Over in Isaiah chapter 59. In Isaiah 59... Verse 7. Their feet run to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting in destruction in their paths. If our thoughts are thoughts of wickedness, and in, wicked, anything that's wicked in God's sight, it's going to bring destruction upon us. That's the fruit of our thoughts. Wasting and destruction is in their paths. In fact, he really gets after Israel, in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 2. Look what he says. He said, I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. God's trying to reach these rebellious people. What's their problem? It says, which walk in a way that was not good. What was the way that was not good? After their own thoughts. Boy, that tells you something. If you and I walk after our own thoughts, God says that's a way that's not good. That's a way of rebellion. Because you've got to realize that you are to submit your mind unto the Lord and think His thoughts. Think on what His Word says in every situation. Instead of 
whatever thoughts come into my own mind. No, I'm not going to walk after that. I'm going to think, what does God want me to do? What does His Word say that I should do in this situation? How should I deal with this according to the Word of God? Instead of just doing it out of the flesh, out of the way I feel, out of my take on it, from a human nature response. Now he calls them a rebellious people. We don't want to be a rebellious people. We are not going to walk in this kind of a way after our own thoughts. Instead, we're going to submit our minds unto the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 14. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? All these evil thoughts were in them. He says, how long are you going to let this thing lodge, lodge within you? And notice, it affects their heart. Because whatever's going on in your mind is going to affect you on the inside of you. And he's saying, you need to wash your heart from all this wickedness that's coming at you. Because you've allowed all these vain, evil thoughts to lodge within you. It is imperative that you and I learn to take our thoughts captive and think on good things. Jeremiah further gets after them over in chapter 6. Verse 19, he says, Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts. That means God brings judgment on people, not just because of their action or their works, but because of their thoughts, the fruit of their thoughts, because their thoughts, of course, will affect them in the actions they take. Because they've not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but they rejected it. They rejected it. They followed after their own thoughts. Instead, the fruit of their own thoughts, you cannot walk after your own ways, your own thoughts. We need to hearken to His Word. We need to submit to His Word instead of rejecting His Word and just choosing our own way. That's why, as we talked about this morning, one of the keys for you to be able to obtain the mind of Christ is not only getting the Word in you, but receiving it in such a way that you're going to take hold of it and do it, incorporate it into your lifestyle this is the way I'm going to live, speak, act, walk. Not just that I get a bunch of information and then think about whether I'm going to do it or not. No, we submit to it as we receive it. We take hold of it to put it in operation in our life. Now, if an evil thought comes into you, you need to deal with it. This speaks of what's going to happen. This is a prophetic statement here in Ezekiel 38 when it talks about the war here in 38 and 39 that's going to come. Thus saith the Lord God, it also shall come to pass at the same time, shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And they're going to act upon it. And they're going to be just attacking and bringing destruction. An evil thought comes into your mind, don't take it. Cast it down. Don't give place to it. Don't let that thing work at you. If you mull and harbor over things, you can make a mountain out of a molehill. How many people have had one little thing and pretty soon it's, it becomes a big, huge thing in their minds and their attitude all because they didn't take their thoughts captive to begin with. You can end up believing all kinds of lies and blowing things out of proportion. Now, we need to watch our thoughts. Over in Daniel, chapter 5. Daniel, chapter 5. We pick up over here in verse 20. And here it's speaking here about the king when it says in verse 20, when his heart was lifted up and his mind was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. You can't let yourself get in pride, get your heart lifted up. Or what happens? The mind got hardened in pride. Pride will harden you. Remember one of the things we talked about to have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got to have a humility of mind. We saw a couple scriptures on that this morning. Humility of mind a humble mind submitted before the Lord. Prideful mind is one that just always does whatever I want to do without considering the Word of God. He was deposed from his kingly throne, took his glory from him, driven from the sons of men, heart was made like unto beasts, dwellings with the wild asses, fed him with grass like oxen, body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. He thought it was him that was doing all these things. No, it was God's the one who gave him authority. And so, because of that, he lost his kingdom for a season, and he was actually mentally ill here for a period of time till he came to the repentance and submitted and knew that God's the one who was the one who gave him the rule. 
God wants you to watch your mind, but it doesn't get a hold. Pride doesn't get a hold of it. Pride will cause a hardening towards the Lord. You must not have pride. Remember, pride will go before a fall. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He will favor the humble. We see over in Matthew chapter 7, we must guard ourselves against all these negative things that would come against our mind. Matthew 7 verse 1 says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Why beholdest thou the mote that's in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that's in thine own eye? Or wilt thou say to the brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam's in thine own eye. You aren't even dealing with yourself. How hypocrite! First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. If you're not working on dealing yourself, you're not about to be a candidate to go and be ministering to someone else. You need to deal with your own problems first. Many people are ready to tell someone all their problems and they don't even want to deal with their own. No, that's a mistake. We can't be hypocritical. We can't be those that are judging others, looking down upon them. Hey, we should judge ourselves and deal with ourselves. Don't have a judgmental attitude towards others. It usually, it's always exalting yourself anyway, thinking I'm better than them and they're not as good as me. No, that's all out of pride. Do not let that come into your mind. Do not be judgmental. We're supposed to think of others more highly than ourselves. the Word says, as we saw today. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 8, we also have to watch that we believe the Word of God in our mind and we don't doubt or we don't reason or we don't allow anything to get us out of faith. Matthew 16, verse 8, Jesus perceived what was going on with them. He said to them, O ye of little faith, why reason you among yourselves because you brought no bread? They didn't understand. They were reasoning among themselves. Do you not understand? Here, talks about the 5,000, the loaves of the 5,000, how many baskets they took up. And he didn't understand that he was talking about the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which was their false doctrine. But they were reasoning among themselves instead of just receiving the Word of God and receiving revelation. We find that people make big mistakes today if they don't just believe God's Word and receive revelation from the Lord and do what He says. Instead, they start reasoning things in their mind. That's how we get into people into false doctrine. And that's how people also will not follow the way of the Lord. God tells them to do something. They start reasoning in their mind instead of just obe obeying. We need to obey and do the things that He says and carry out these things. Believe God's Word. Don't doubt. Don't let anything get into your mind that would cause you to walk contrary to it. You've got to watch men, especially, have to watch that they're reason, they don't reason themselves out of the Word of God. You know, men are, are reasoners, mental. Our women are emotional. They feel, and that's fine. But we got to, men, one of the big problems, they reason in their mind. And they can make lots of mistakes because of that. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, here's where Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get thee behind thee, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. What was happening was, this is when Jesus had shown in verse 21 how he was going to go to Jerusalem. He was going to suffer many things of the elders, the chief priests, scribes, be killed and raised again the third day. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Since when is Peter going to tell the Lord what he's going to do and to rebuke him? And of course, notice, he said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Otherwise, Peter's the one who said it, but who was operating in him? The devil was operating in him. The evil spirit was operating him because he wasn't yielding to what, God, what Jesus said. Instead, he was yielding to the devil that brought thoughts into him. He said, you're an offense to me. You savorest are, are, are thinking upon the th not, the things that, not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Otherwise, he was approaching this from a man's standpoint. We don't want you to go. They were thinking about themselves instead of realizing that Jesus needed to go to the cross and die in order to accomplish the redemption. They did not understand these things whatsoever. This is why we've got to watch our thoughts. In verse 24, Jesus said, Jesus said to the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. If we're going to follow the Lord, 
We can't walk on our own ways. We can't be figuring things out and do what I want to do. You've got to deny yourself. So if I deny myself, what am I going to walk after? The Word of God. You're going to do what the Word says. You're going to submit your mind, your will, to the Word of God. You deny yourself, you take up your cross, which is the crucifying of the flesh daily, and you follow me. And we follow him by following the Word of God and doing the things that he says. Over in Mark chapter 5, we saw this this morning, but we want to look at it again. It's important for you to understand. The devil will come into your mind through the open door of sin, and evil spirits will come in and lodge and cause all kinds of destructive effects. This is the man from Gadara. This man from Gadara was bound with all these demons, a legion of demons, totally out of his mind. Yet, he could choose to come to Jesus. That shows you that any person, regardless of how bound they are in their mind, they can still come to the Lord when they hear of him. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshipped him. This is a guy who had a legion of demons cutting himself out in the stone, in the tombs, running around with no clothes, totally crazy. Supernatural strength. They would bind him with the chains and he'd break them because of the supernatural strength of the demons that were in him. Yet he could run to Jesus and fall down and worship him. He cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. This is the demon speaking. It was being tormented. How? Because he's being cast out. He said it, for he said unto them, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Jesus was casting the demons out of the man. God wants us to cast the demons out of all of us in order to be set free from bondages. Well, as the demons were being cast out, what was the result? Verse 15 says, They come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, had the legion, sitting, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. We see something here. He had all these demons. They'd been cast out. He was sitting. We'll t mention about this in a moment. And he was clothed in his right mind. This progression is important to realize what's being said. And we can see it a little bit clearer when we go over to Luke's account, Luke chapter 8, over in verse 35, which is parallel to this. They went out to see what was done and came to Jesus, found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus. So he wasn't just sitting there doing nothing. He was sitting at the feet of Jesus. What's that a revelation of? Who else was sitting at the feet of Jesus? Remember, Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. In Luke chapter 10, verse 39, Mary and Martha said she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. What this is speaking of is the fact that this one who had the demons cast out of him that were causing him to be in the state that he was in, he also was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And we talk about this sit, so he obviously was sitting at the feet of Jesus hearing the word continually. It's a spiritual revelation. Don't just think of it just as a natural occurrence. It's a spiritual revelation to us. Because sitting at the feet of Jesus, this wasn't just for a moment. This present tense in the Greek. The tenses are very important in the Greek because they specifically show you the action of the verb. And the present tense is continuous, repeated, ongoing action. So this speaks of him continually sitting at the feet of Jesus, which is about hearing the word of God, just as she sat and heard the word. And then also it said he was clothed. When it speaks of this one being clothed, this was action that was accomplished. It's a perfect tense verb. The perfect tense refers to a completed action in the past with present effects at the time of the speaking. In other words, the demons were cast out he was continually sitting at the feet of Jesus, hearing the word, receiving the word. And this result of hearing the word caused him to be clothed with God's spiritual clothes through the word in him. And this had happened in the past as well, as he was going through this deliverance, is what it's all talking about. And it had the present effects that he stayed clothed. If you're clothed with the things of God, you'll be protected. You'll have the mind of the Lord Jesus. You won't be giving place to him through areas of sin in your mind and allowing the enemy to come in. And of course the result was he was in his right mind. The revelation is that 
We cast out the demons continually till they're all gone. It is a process. At the same time, we need to be sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing the word continually, especially on the areas where we have need of, and continually do it and apply it in our life. The result will be we will be clothed, putting on God's clothes or putting on armor, being clothed like putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the same word, talks about clothed, through the word of God, so that then we'll walk like him, think like him, choose his ways. We'll also be able to maintain our deliverance so the demons cannot come back in. And then, of course, he'll be in his right mind. The point being is, as we're going through deliverance, we better be in the Word dealing with all the problems in our life. Many people approach deliverance, they just want to get the spirits cast out, but they don't really want to deal with all the problems. They, you know, they, just, they continue to walk the same way. Are they going to get anywhere? No. The demons are going to come back in, they're going to be in worse shape because they haven't corrected the problems. We have to correct the problems, and we're going to do that through the Word of God as he's sitting here he's, as he's sitting at the feet of Jesus. And we're going to get clothed through the Word, putting all these things on ourselves in order to then be in a right mind and be able to maintain our deliverance. And that is so important. If you're going to walk in victory and overcome, you're going to have to be in the Word consistently in your life. We see over in Romans chapter... One. Romans chapter 1, we see quite an interesting point here in this passage of Scripture. It speaks of those that knew God. Romans 1.21. Because that they knew God, they knew God at one point. So they had knowledge, they had revelation of Him, they had a relationship with Him. They glorified Him not as God. They weren't doing what He told them to do. They weren't thankful anymore. If you get your eyes off the Lord and you're not glorifying Him as who He is and not thankful for Him, that means now you're walking in the flesh, walking in your own ways. They became vain in their imaginations, in their reasonings, in their thinking. And their foolish heart was darkened. Because if you don't have the light coming into you, your heart will get full of darkness because of walking in your own ways. They professed themselves to be wise, but instead they became fools. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. You'd think that's crazy that people would ever do such a thing, but that shows you that if you don't get your mind on the Lord, the devil will work in you and he can change you to that place because of rejecting the way of the Lord. Change the glory of the incorruptible God into this image. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, how have we seen, why have we seen people get into homosexuality? Because they reject God. They reject His ways. And God will give them up into uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, dishonoring their own bodies. And what else do they do? They change the truth of God into a lie. they got their own truth now, instead of walking after the truth. They don't submit to the Word of God any longer. And they worship and serve the creature. That's the person. So who are they serving? They're serving themselves instead more than the Creator who's blessed forever. When they get their eyes on themselves, this is just a picture of someone who's walking in the flesh, walking after my own ways, after my own thoughts, doing whatever I want to do, changing the truth of God into a lie, and serving, worshiping and serving the creature themselves. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. See, what's the answer for all these homosexuals and these people who've got into all this verse thing? They've got to come to repentance and get their relationship established with God. It's not so much dealing with that particular sin. I mean, that needs to be dealt with. But they need to get a relationship with God first and come to repentance and understand who He is. And then God will start working to turn them around from all those areas of sin. That's why you don't go, when you preach the gospel, you don't go condemning people over their sins. Remember, there's only one sin that He convicts us of. It's the sin of not believing on Jesus. And He's not holding our sins against us, as it says in, in 2 Corinthians. People go make a mistake. You don't go condemning people over their actions. You get the gospel into them and so that they come to the place of repentance and receive Jesus and then give them the word and God will start working in their heart to bring them to repentance. And this is, of course, what has to happen for them. And so the women did change the natural use and that is against nature. The men leaving the natural use of the women burned their lusts one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves that recompense of the air that was meat. They got involved in all these things and they think that it's all right because their mind now has been deceived. 
It says they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to think about God anymore. You find a lot of times when people are in that state, I don't want to hear it. Don't, I don't want to hear anything about God. You had, had people you try to talk to, I don't want to hear that. They just shut you off. Those guys have been, or they're like this. They've rejected him. They're in trouble. But they need to hear it anyway to have a chance to come to repentance. They didn't like to God, retain God in their knowledge. So God gave them over to a reprobate mind, an unapproved mind to do the things that are convenient. Now people think, well, why would God give someone over to a reprobate mind? Because God will let you choose your way. And if you don't have, follow his way, he'll let you go and choose another way. And they'll end up with a reprobate mind. In fact, we can even see what's going to happen in the end here. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, we see in 2, Corinthians, or 2 Thessalonians, that is, in chapter um, 2, where it speaks of how he's going to come in verse 10 with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They wouldn't receive it. They rejected it. Ah, because they reject it. For this cause, God will shall send upon them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You reject the way of the Lord, you're going to end up following something. And God's going to give them strong delusion. They're going to believe a lie. They're going to believe the Antichrist is the God. He is really God. And it's a lie. And they're going to be deceived. They're going to be sunk. They're going to take the mark. They're going to be finished. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. This is why God's word is so important in your life. You need to receive God's word. Make sure that you receive it. You take hold of it. You work it in your life. You follow it. Don't reject it. You don't want to be turned over to a reprobate mind in any way. We want to have the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing that we talked about this morning, which we need to talk about again, cause of destruction in your mind, Romans chapter 7, we see over here in verse 15, where Paul was in this dilemma and he said, That which I do, I allow not. For what I would or what I will to do, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. His whole point is, the things that I don't want to do, I'm doing. The things that I do want to do, I'm not doing. What a mess that he's in. He realizes now, it's no more I that do it, but it's sin dwelling in me. Something's working in me that is causing me to do these things. And then he realizes, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. You see, you have a spirit that's right with God. When you get born again, you got a new spirit, and you got a new heart on the inside of you. But you didn't get a new body. Your body's the same. And your body is a body of death, and it does not want to walk in the ways of the Lord. His to will is present with him because that was coming from the inner man on the inside, as he speaks of. He talks about, I delight in the law of God after the inward man, the inner man of the heart on the inside. But he saw another law and his members warring against the law of his mind, bringing into captivity to the law of sin in his members. This means, can you trust your flesh? Can you trust your body? Can you trust the human nature desires? Never. Can you trust your feelings? Never. Your feelings are the voice of the flesh. They will deceive you. You have to watch that. It says he bring them into captivity to the law of sin in my members. <coughs> He says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he goes on, says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then he says, So with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. That shows you the importance. You must get your mind renewed to the word. So that with your mind, thinking correctly, you'll serve the law of God. Because you'll choose to do it. But if you don't have your mind renewed then you're going to end up walking by the human nature, the flesh, just doing whatever you feel like doing, whatever seems right in your own sight, and you'll walk in the ways of sin. You'll follow after the law of sin. So this is why getting your mind renewed to the Word is ex absolutely essential. Otherwise, you're going to walk in the wrong way. Romans 8.5 also tells us something. We pointed this out, but we need to reiterate this tonight. You can have your mind renewed to the Word Yet, you're not set to walk after the Word, after the way of the Spirit. Many people know the Word, but they walk in the flesh. Why? 
because their focus is not on doing what the Word says. Look what it says. They that are after the flesh, after what I feel like doing, the human nature way, my desires, they'll mind the things of the flesh. That's where their mindset is. But they that are after the Spirit, after what the Word says, thinking what the Word says and everything, they will mind the things of the Spirit. To be carnally minded, a fleshly run mind, is death. Yes. But to be spiritually minded, which is a Word-ruled mind, is life and peace. That's what God wants. Yes. And he goes on and says, the carnal mind is enmity, or hostile and antagonistic, this refers to, against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The only way you can have a mind that's right, submitted to God, is a spiritual mind, having been renewed to the Word and submitted unto the way of the Spirit, walking after the Word of God. And then he says, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. There's no way you can please, the, you can please God if you walk after the human nature way, after whatever you feel like doing your own ways. That's why it's imperative that you submit your mind to the Word of God. You submit yourself to think, what does the Word say that I should do in every situation? If you don't, you'll react left and right according to the human nature and make a mess of a lot of things because of the way you deal with a situation instead of responding according to the Word. We want to always do what the Word says, and that's so important. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 6. These things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Don't get your eyes on men. Don't get your eyes on people. You get your eyes on the Lord. And he says, not to think of men above that which is written, or... Really, the word, actually, the word men here, where it's talked about, it's not even in the, in the Greek. Notice men is italicized. When you see italicized words in the, New, in the King James, it's not in there. It's been added by the translators. It actually says that you might learn in us not to think above that which is written. In other words, don't think contrary to what the word says, essentially what it's saying. The next part talks about that no one of you be puffed up for one against another, uh, being where you're in co contradiction against another. The key is to think, not to think above that which is written. So what should we do? We should think according to that which is written, not contrary to it. You know, we have people today, they have extra biblical sources, supposedly of truth, that they look to that's contrary to the word of God. Do we look to anything outside of the Word of God for truth? Never. Any of these Jewish books and fables and all these lies, do not listen to them, do not look to them. They're false. They're not the truth. We should not think above that which is written. Never. And we shouldn't get in any kind of contention. Don't ever have any kind of extra biblical revelation ever. It is a great mistake. And don't get your eyes on people as well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, I, I couldn't speak unto you as spiritual, but unto, as a carnal, unto babes in Christ. He said, I fed you with milk, not with meat. Hereto you were not able to bear it, yet now you're not able. You're, you're carnal, he says, because there's envy and strife, divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? That's like walking after people in the flesh, after people just that aren't even born again. While one saith, I'm a Paul, another says, I'm an Apollos, are you not carnal? They were following this man and this, uh, this group or that particular one. Do we do that? No. There's only one church. It's the church of the firstborn. Who we follow after is Jesus. He follow after him, not after men. He goes on and says, Who then's Paul? And who's Apollos? But by ministers by whom you believe, because they just taught you the word, even as the Lord gave to every man. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. Paul and Apollos are nothing. We are nothing. We are simply vessels for God to flow through. Who's doing all the work? God is. All we are is a vessel. But God that gives the increase. Don't ever get your eyes on men either. Never. Always get your eyes, and you get, people get their eyes on men. 
It'll deceive you because you'll end up following after a man. And that's a problem. And you'll think that what so-and-so says is above the word of God. Uh, we see people do that all the time. And that's a mistake. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You're to follow after the word of God, period. Whatever the word says is what you follow after. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11. When I was a child, this is the Greek word nepios, which refers to an infant, like a babe in Christ. I spake as a child, as a little child. I understood or had a way of understanding in my mind as a little infant. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away the childish things. God wants us to grow up. He wants us to grow up in the things of God so we don't speak and understand and think as a in spiritual infant. That's why we got to get the Word in us. We've got to get spiritual understanding. We've got to learn to speak what God says and grow up and walk in the ways of the Lord. And we're going to come to the place of growing up into spiritual manhood in the Lord and become mature in the Lord. This is why we've got to get the Word in us we got to learn to speak right. we got to get his understanding and walk in it consistently. And you got to put away all the childish things, all these things that are not of the Lord. you got to put them away out of your life. Another thing that's important, if you are going to have the mind of the Lord and not see destructive things come in your mind, you got to understand how Satan works against you. 2 Corinthians 2.11, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. The devices are talking about all of his plans, all of his thoughts, all of his purposes that he would have come against you with. We cannot be ignorant or not knowing how the enemy works. You know, I've heard many times people say, well, I've been to churches where they say, we never talk about the devil. We're not going to talk about the devil. We're only going to talk about God and about Jesus. Well, you need to talk about the devil to know what the devil's doing. If you don't know what the devil's purposes, plans, and perceptions, and thoughts, and his actions are, how are you going to be able to know what he's up to? Right. No, we don't want to talk about him. Well, then you're going to be easily deceived by him because you're ignorant of his devices. That's why we have to know these things. And if we're ignorant of, of the Word of God, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to end up following after the lusts. It says in 1 Peter 1, 14, As obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts and your ignorance, lack of knowledge. We've got to become obedient. When you hear the word, be obedient to it. Don't just let it sit. Don't just, you know, idly in your life. You need to put it in operation and do what the word of God says. That is absolutely essential. We must understand that if there's areas of sin in our life, God expects us to repent. In Acts chapter 17, down in verse 30, the times of this ignorance God winked at in the Old Testament era, because nobody was born again yet. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Change your mind. Change your way. Change your actions. Start walking in the ways of the Lord. We can't, you know, God doesn't wink at sin any longer. He calls every one of us to repent. He expects us to walk in the ways of the Lord now. Now, if we do reject his word and we don't walk in it, we're going to have a hardening effect. 2 Corinthians 3.14 says, Their minds were blinded, or this really refers to their minds were hardened, more the Greek word means. The Jews' minds were hardened. Why? Because they rejected the word of God. And so their mind got hardened. What will happen to you if you reject the things of the word of God? your mind will get hardened as well. They were blinded or hardened. Until this day remains the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. That's why we've got to submit to the Word of God. And who, of course, is behind getting people to do this? It's the devil. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, In whom the God of this age, it's not world, but age it means, has blinded, and this means blind, the minds of those who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine into them. See, what do people need? They need the glorious gospel. They need the word to come into them. When you go to preach to people, preach the word to them. Don't give your opinions. Don't give your thoughts. 
Don't give your take on something. Give the word to them. The word of God is the power of God and the salvation to all those that believe. They need to get the truth in them so that they have a chance to come to repentance and believe the truth. The devil has worked hard to blind their minds. That's why when you go to pray for people or you go to minister to people or witness, bind the demons in them first, loosen and tie the blinders off of their minds, and thank the Holy Spirit for working to prepare their heart for to be receptive to the Word of God. And then as you sow the Word in them, then the Word is going to come into them as you have untied those blinders so that God can bring revelation to them as the Word comes into their mind. The light of the glorious gospel will shine into them to bring the truth to them. Another thing we see, the devil will also try to corrupt your minds. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Oh, mind, your mind can get corrupted if you get your eyes off of the Word of God. Eve didn't have the Word of God straight. If she would have, she wouldn't have been deceived. She didn't have the Word. Remember, God said, you can't eat of the, tree, of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Her response was, well, he said we can't touch it or we can't eat of it. God never said anything about touching it. He just said he couldn't eat of it. She didn't have it straight. And also, she said, we can't eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. The tree in the midst of the garden was the tree of life. That's what they were supposed to eat of. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was just one of the trees. It didn't say it was in the midst of the garden. She got the whole thing wrong. She wasn't straight on things. If you don't have the word in your mind, you will be deceived by the enemy and your mind will get corrupted by not believing the truth. This is why we've got to get the exact knowledge of God in us. Another thing that's important, once you have had the truth come to you, don't turn away from it and go another direction. Galatians chapter 5, we pick up in verse 7. He says, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Of course, who's the who that's working against everybody? The devil. Sure. And what does he try to do? He tries to get you to not obey the truth. Because when you receive the word, you're to walk in it. They were running well. They were following the word. But now, he, they were not obeying the truth anymore. That was a mistake. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. It didn't come from the Lord. A little leaven, which is sin because of not following the Lord, leavens the whole lump. It was contaminating them. We cannot have sin at all. We cannot have any kind of sin or it contaminates us in our life. That's from disobedience. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will none, be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And he's speaking to the Galatians that they were not going to be minded like these other ones who quit obeying the truth. See what happened to them in Galatians. What happened was they quit following the way of the Spirit after the Word of God in the New Testament, and they were going back into the Old Testament law, walking after the flesh, thinking that they could be righteous by their own works. No, there's no way. We cannot do that. In fact, we see people today doing this. We see people going back into the Old Testament law and following after the Old Testament law. Do we follow the Old Testament law? No. Why? Because we have a new covenant. And, well, what about, what, is there a law in the new covenant? Yes, there is. Hebrews 7.12 says, The priesthood being changed, there's made of necessity a change also of the law. Not a doing away of law, but a change of the law. You and I are under the, old, the New Testament law now. We're not under the Old Testament law. The Old Testament law is for those after the flesh. Well, we're now born after the Spirit. Now we walk after the New Testament law. Some people have thought that, well, the New Testament laws are add-ons to the Old Testament law, and we walk according to all of it. No, we don't. That's wrong. They are caught. You cannot walk after. One's made after the man after the flesh. The other's after the man after the Spirit. And here's a perfect example of this. It shows you how the enemy will deceive people and get them off track. And that's what happened to the church at Galatia. It says in Matthew 5, 43, Jesus said, You've heard that it's been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Where did that come from? The Old Testament. They would love their enemy, they'd love their neighbor, and they would hate their enemy. Jesus says, 
I say unto you, love your enemies. What's he telling them? I'm telling you the new law, the New Testament law that I'm bringing forth in. Because Jesus taught all these things about the New Testament. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them to despitefully use you and persecute you. Can you love your enemies and hate your enemy at the same time? No. They don't mix. So, am I going to do the Old Testament law and the New Testament law? No. What am I going to walk after? The New Testament law now. The Old Testament law is eliminated. These people have gone back to that. We have whole denominations that follow the Old Testament law today. We have people who have gone back into the Old Testament law or added on and think that they're following after the way of the Lord. It's error. They've missed the whole boat. They're like the, having the same error as the church at Galatia. What a mistake. And it's leading them back into bondage in their life. Ephesians chapter 2. Our mind must be renewed to the Word of God in the New Testament and the New Testament law. Ephesians 2.11, among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. This is desires of the mind that come from a fleshly attitude, from one who is just walking after whatever I feel like doing. Anything that comes from your desires, inconsistent with that, considering what the Word says, is walking after the flesh or after a carnal-minded attitude. We can't walk in those ways. That's the way of disobedience that brought all kinds of judgments. It brought they were the children of wrath and brings judgments upon them. We see over in Philippians chapter 3, he's speaking here, again, to the church. And this is a real problem that we see in the body of Christ today. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk as you have for us an example. Those are people who are walking after the word. That's good. But then he goes on, he says, For many walk, that's not a few, that's a whole lot of people, of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. What's the cross all about? The cross is where something's put to death. What is supposed to be put to death? All the deeds of the body. We're to crucify the flesh daily. So, they're enemies of the cross of Christ, of putting to death all these deeds of the body and walking instead of walking after the ways of the Lord. What he says is their end is destruction. That's quite a statement. What's their problem? Their God is their belly. They're being run by their flesh, whose glory is in their shame, and they're minding earthly things. If your flesh is running you and you're minding earthly things, your end is destruction. We're not supposed to be minding earthly things. We're supposed to be minding heavenly things by walking in line with the Word. That's why as our minds renewed to this Word, we're going to walk in the earth according to heaven's ways, not according to earthly ways. We're not going to be minding earthly things. That is a mistake. We see many Christians, unfortunately, that are doing this today. Their end is going to be destruction. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. What do you do when you have thoughts of worry, anxiety, fear, all these things come into you, concern, cares. That's not what God wants in your life. It's going to stop your faith from working. He says in Philippians 4, 6, Be careful, anxious, uh, or troubled, or full of care for nothing. You cast every care upon the Lord because He cares for you, the Bible says. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you let your request, which is the word itema in the Greek, which means a demand of something due which is how do you pray in the New Testament? You pray the Word, which is the promise that you're praying in order to take hold of that. And you do it with thanksgiving because you're taking hold of the promise that's already been given unto you. And you're to make that known unto God. Otherwise, pray the Word, not talk about your problem. Do we pray the problem? No, that's not going to solve anything. I have all these problems. God already knows your problems. Pray the word that's the answer to the problem and take hold of it to see God manifest that in your life. And he says, the peace of God that passes all understanding of your mind shall keep guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You can be guarded in your heart and your mind with the peace of God. What does that tell us? If we don't have the peace of God, we've given place to the enemy. We are not thinking the way we should. Well, I got all these situations. All this anxiety coming at me. Cast it upon the Lord. 
Start praying the Word of God. The peace of God should be upon you at all times. It will guard your heart and your mind. God wants you to be at peace at all times in your life. That is so important. Over in Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, over in verse 21. You who were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now I think reconciled. What's that tell you? Your works shows what kind of set mindset you have. You do some wicked works, hey, your mind hasn't been right. Otherwise, you'd have never been doing it. You better be thinking on it before you acted upon it. That's why he says to each one of those churches, I know their works, I know their works, I know their works, I know their works. That tells you where your mindset's been. If you're not working the things that God says, your mindset must be on the wrong kind of things. Otherwise, you wouldn't be working them. Their mind, they were enemies in their mind by wicked works. Your works reveal what kind of a mindset you have had within yourself. You've got to make sure you've got the mind of the Lord, thinking on what the Word says. And then you'll do the works of the Lord. Colossians 2.18, remember, we're going to be judged for all of our works as well. Colossians 2.18, Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. The fleshly mind will always puff you up, build you up, exalt you. Anything that's coming in your mind to puff you up, make you think you're something, build you up, I'm better than this person or whatever that, ah, look what I've done. Uh, that's the devil. He's working at you. Pride is trying to get you to pull you down. Prideful people have a mind of the flesh. Humble people have a mind of the spirit. And they never let themselves get puffed up by a fleshly mind. God does not want that. Also, if you don't know the truth, you'll be considered having a corrupt mind. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. He speaks of the perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth. They, didn't have, they weren't established in the truth. If you're established in the truth, you won't have a corrupt mind. Their mind was corrupted because they were thinking here, supposing that gain was godliness, from such withdrawal thyself. Any of these people out there teaching you, just get all the things you can and try to become a billionaire or a millionaire or whatever, error, you know, and have all this stuff and get all these things. Does our life consist in all those things? That ultra prosperity, God wants to prosper us, but the ultra prosperity teaching is totally of the flesh. It's not of the Lord whatsoever. I think the gain is godliness. That makes me be godly. No, He wants to prosper our hands because He wants to bring finances for the propagation of the gospel but not to consume upon our own lusts and have all these things. Some of these guys, well, I got my Rolls Royce and I got my Rolex and I got my six houses and I got my boats and all these things. Uh-huh, yeah, we know what you're doing. It's all out for you. There's a problem there. Yeah, that's a problem. It says, for those ones that have corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, and those ones you're supposed to withdraw yourself from. Yet we see so many Christians chasing after this today. In fact, they'll fall for the lie that says, send your $1,000 and your mother will be healed. Send your $5,000 and your house will be paid off. Uh, say, Give me your money and God will just cancel all your debts. They'll just be gone just like that. That's all lies. It's total deception. No. God's going to prosper the work of your hands. He's going to help you to pay off your debt, not cancel your debt. He's going to prosper you to do it. I gave you the testimony recently of the one family that was 60 some thousand dollars in debt. And they learned about tithing and they began to tithe. And they started tithing consistently and God started bringing blessings and they started opening up all kinds of things for them. They're prospering this way and that way. And he's showing them what to do. And they got that debt down and their testimony was about two, a week or so ago, two weeks ago, I guess it was now, when they contacted me, they said now all they owed was $800 and they're about ready to pay it off. And they didn't get some just, you know, it was all the Lord working to prosper their hands and they were able to pay off all their debts. That's what God wants. Do these things. God wants us to get, we got to get the word in us and we can't have wrong thoughts, wrong motivations. No, you're going to do things God's way. If you're going to do things, do it God's way. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. How did they get corrupt? They resisted the truth. This is why it's so important that you get the word in you, you get the truth in you, don't resist it. We see lots of people out there, they've resisted things. They resisted deliverance. We don't believe that. They resisted praying in tongues. We think that's all passed away. Well, the Bible didn't say it's passed away. You just decided that it's passed away because you thought that you took a thing out of context. It says tongues have ceased in the midst of prophecies failing and knowledge vanishing away, you know, and stuff. And they haven't finished or vanished away. People just make all these things in order to fit their doctrines of men instead of following after the truth. If we resist the truth, we will be a corrupt mind. We're going to be deceived, reprobate concerning the faith. That's why receive the word. It is the truth. Put it in operation. Do it. You may not have all the revelation, but do it anyway. Do what the Word says. In the midst of you doing the truth, you'll come to the light. That's one thing that many people don't learn to do. The scripture on that is in John chapter 3, in verse 21. He that doeth truth comes to the light. You get a certain amount of light because, you, uh, because you've heard some things. But only when you do the truth will you really come to the light. You need to do it. Do the word. You know, reminds me of the pastor that didn't believe that Christians could have any demons. And he had all these problems going on in his family. And he heard about the minister about the deliverance I was teaching on the radio. And he was first very reje rejecting of everything. But God started working on him as he continued to hear. And then he wanted to get the series of messages. And he got the deliverance seminar sent it to him. As he began to hear, and this is one where I actually was casting demons out at the end, and as he was hearing at the end of it, and as I started casting the demons out, the demons started coming out of him. And he started receiving the message. And he started seeing the deliverance. He says, well, I guess this is the truth. He was resisting the truth all along, you know, but once here, he at least got to the place of hearing the word and accepting it, and he even would listen to the deliverance session, and it started bringing the demons out as he was essentially doing the word, or allowing the word to work in his life. He got the revelation of it. He started casting the demons out of himself. And you know what? He found out that the problems were not his wife. He thought it was she was the problem in the home. It turned out it was him that was the problem. And he started getting changed, and his wife came and said, boy, you have changed. You know, we're not having all these problems any longer. She th he thought it was her, but it was him that was causing all these problems. He was real controlling and dominating and full of strife and he had to have his own way and all these things. And God started delivering him out of this and everything turned around because he was getting set free. When we do truth in any area, you will come to the light. Don't reject it or you'll be in a place of not having an approved mind. You could get to the place of having a reprobate mind. And that's a, that's a reprobate, those who resist the truth. We also see over in Titus, this is how people get their minds messed up, resisting the truth. Here's one where it says, giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Any of these Jewish fables out there that are contrary to the word, they're not a part of the scripture, do not ever listen to them or pay attention to them whatsoever. They're out there being talked about on the TV, on the radio, by all these preachers out there and all these so-called end-time prophecy experts that they think they are, and they're way off in Lululand. Yes. They're way off track. They're yeah. bringing things that are totally contrary to the truth. Mm -hmm. Talking about all these Jewish fables and commandments of men. What do they do? They turn from the truth. You've got to stay away from that. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto those that are defiled and unbelieving nothing's pure, even their mind and their conscience is defiled. Watch what you believe. If you don't believe the truth, you're going to be defiled. If you don't have, uh, the, if you're in unbelief about things, you're defiled in some way. That's why you've got to make sure that you're following only the truth. Otherwise your mind will get, and conscience will get defiled. All these ones, they all profess they know God. It sounds like it. But in works, they deny him being abominable, disobedient unto every good work, reprobate. They're not standing the test, not approved, because they reject the truth, they turn away from it, and they get mind and conscience gets defiled. 
because they start walking after the fables, the commandments of men that turn away from the truth. That's so important that we deal with things in our life. We also talked about this morning a couple more scriptures before we close that things that will cause your mind to be a problem is if you have double-mindedness. Double-mindedness causes you to be unstable in all your ways. It means i got to be single-minded or I'm not going to get anywhere. In fact, the verse before it says, Let not that man think that he shall receive, the Greek word is lombano, take hold of anything of the Lord. He's not going to be able to take anything of the Lord. And why is that? Because he's wavering. You can't be wavering. You're tossed this way and that way. You've got to be settled on the word and know what the word says. And he says a double-minded man is unstable. He's unstable. He's not constant in all of his ways. And that's going to hinder you. You've got to have your mind set with the word. You've got to know what the word says. I'm ready to do the word. Walk it out in your life. Otherwise, it's going to cause a destructive effect in your life. You'll be unstable. Are you going to have your faith in operation? No. Are you going to be able to see, take hold of the promises, take hold of anything of the Lord? No. Not if you're double-minded, the Bible says. This is why people, people that just try everything, I'll try this and I'll try that and I'll try that, they go nowhere. You don't just try. Well, I'm going to try this and I'll try it, I'll try it and see if it works. Forget it. You're going nowhere. You're going to do the word because you know it's the truth and you're going to take hold of the truth from the Lord. Since when are you going to try out Jesus and see if he'll do something? <laughs> That's a joke. That's ridiculous. You're going to do what it says. You're going to submit to what he says. You're going to believe his word. You're going to obey what he tells you to do because his word is right and you have confidence and faith knowing that he will perform it. We don't just try and see what's going to work. And then everybody tries six other ways instead of really trusting the Lord. No wonder they're not getting any way. It's anywhere. It's not going to happen. Also, you've got to guard your heart and make sure that you're only thinking correctly. James 4.8 says, Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. That tells you something. If you're double-minded, not only can you not take hold of anything of the Lord, so it's contaminated your mind in that way, but also it's caused an impureness in your heart. If you get rid of the double-mindedness, then you won't have impurity in your heart. In other words, that's a gate into your heart through what you're thinking upon. You've got to really learn to guard your mind. That brings us to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This scripture needs to be a life scripture for every single one of you. Every Christian needs to do, these, do this. 2 Corinthians 10.5 Casting down imaginations, any reasonings, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, anything that's contrary to the word, you cast that down immediately. And bringing into captivity every thought, not just once in a while, Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Just think, if you bring into captivity every thought, the devil's never going to be able to get to you. Because what you think is going to affect you in your choices and what you speak. That's why you won't be speaking wrong words. You won't be making wrong choices if you take all your thoughts captive and you think on what God says. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If it's not in line with the word, cast that down. Bring it in obedience to the things of Christ. And do not allow yourself to be a gate for anything coming in. That's why you don't want to see anything, hear anything, watch anything, anything that's bringing in evil things into you. That eliminates all the TV programs, all the movies, brings any of the stuff out there in the media, out there in the world, most of it. It's just pouring <laughs> in evil things into you. And you're supposed to have a readiness. Be ready and prepared, this word means, to revenge all disobedience. This is the devil attacking you with these things, trying to get you off the word. Remember, Satan comes for the word's sake to try to get the word out of your heart so you will not produce fruit in your life. That's why the word in your heart and the word in your mind is mandatory. You've got to have the mind of the Lord and you've got to keep your mind away from destructive things coming into it that will stop you from being able to take hold of the promises of God in your life. And You're going to revenge the disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Your obedience to what? to casting down those imaginations or reasonings. And you're bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We also see the word says over in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, 
God wants you to be at peace in your mind at all times. Can I really be at peace at all times? Yes, if you have your mind on the Lord. Isaiah 26, 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Your mind is thinking on what the word says. You are going to stay in perfect peace at all times. When any attacks come, you cast them down or you cast the care on the Lord or you replace it, bring the thought captive in line with the word. Make sure you're only thinking on what's in line with the word. You pray the word, you speak the word, you do what the word says. You have your mind stayed on him, you're trusting in him. You're putting the word in operation in your life and you're not allowing any of this negativism to come into you. One last scripture. What should we be governing our mind and making sure that we're thinking right? This checklist is what you need in your life. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, the truth, if they're in line with the truth, that's okay for your mind. Whatsoever things are honest, those things that are honorable, would it be honorable before the Lord? Would it just bring honor to the Lord? Anything that you would watch out there on the media, TV, or whatever, would Jesus sit down there and watch it with you? Would it be honoring to the Lord? I don't think so. Uh, eliminate that. Whatsoever things are just, Righteous. Is it in line with righteousness, the word? Whatsoever things are pure or clean and holy, clean from anything, sinless. That's all I want. I don't want to hear anything that's not right. Whatsoever things are lovely, which means acceptable and pleasing, well-pleasing to him. Would this please the Lord, what I'm thinking on? Or am I thinking on some really garbage stuff that's coming in my mind or watching? Whatsoever things are a good report, that means, do you want to sit there and listen to someone be a garbage dump for all their problems and so forth? With that, you know, if you, don't, if you want to give them counsel and give them the Word of God, encourage them, pray with them, but you don't want them just to give you all the negative report, just pour out all this stuff. That's not going to do any good. It says, if there be any virtue, moral excellence, if there be any praise, think on these things. That ought to be a good checklist for our mind. You want to be, get your mind in order? Think on things that are in line with the truth. Yeah. Think on things that are honorable, that are righteous, that are pure and holy and clean, that are well-pleasing to God, that are the good report, that have moral excellence and bring praise unto God. Think on these things. Right. Boy, that'll get our mind in line, won't it? Mm -hmm. No more thinking as well. Well, the devil will bring up, well, think about what he did, what she did, what they said. Oh, no. no, cast it down. Get rid of it. You know what people a lot of times do? They sit there and mull and revolve things around in their mind and it goes over in their mind. They replay the thing 50 times over, you know, day after day after day. You're just giving place to the enemy left and right. You cast that down. You don't let the devil do that to your mind. You think get your mind on the things of the Lord. If you're going to be dealing with that, pray the word and put, put God in operation to deal with that situation and then let it go. And don't get your mind on it any longer. You just pray the word. We got to but not let the devil have place in our mind. We got to guard our mind. We need the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we need to make sure that we're guarding our minds so we don't see negative effects, destruction come into our mind. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God. I am going to guard my mind. I will make sure that I do not allow evil thoughts to come into my mind. I will not walk after my own thoughts. That would make me rebellious. Walking in a way that's not good. I will not have evil thoughts. I will see judgment from the fruit of my thoughts if I don't take them captive. I will not allow pride to come into my mind, exalting myself. I will never be judgmental against other people. I will not be allowing the enemy to get me to sin, allowing evil spirits to come into my mind as I'm casting out the demons that have come into me in the past. I will be sitting at the feet of Jesus, hearing the word, applying the word, correcting the problems, so I walk in line with the Word of God, being clothed through the Word of God, and so I'll be in a right mind.
and I'll retain my deliverance. I will glorify the Lord. I will be thankful for him. If I get my eyes off of him, my mind will be deceived. I'll end up with a reprobate mind and my heart will be darkened. I thank you, Lord, that my mind is going to be thinking on what the Word says. With my mind renewed to the Word, I will serve the law of God. If I don't think on what the Word says, I will walk in the flesh and I will serve the law of sin. My mind will be after the things of the Spirit, not after the things of the flesh. I will also understand the works of the devil. I will not be ignorant of how Satan works to try to deceive me. I thank you, Lord, that I will know exactly what the Word of God says, not what I think it says, or my mind will be corrupted. I must know exactly what it says. I will walk after the New Testament, not after the Old Testament. Laws. The laws changed. I will follow the way of the New Testament. I will not mind earthly things. I will not let my belly be my God. I will have no anxiety or worry or care. I will cast them upon the Lord. I will pray the word of God. I will not allow myself to have a corrupted mind through any means of resisting the truth or receiving false teaching from Jewish fables or commandments of men or works that are contrary to the word. I will make sure that I am walking in line with the word of God and I will be single-minded upon the word. I will not be double-minded or I won't be able to take hold of the promises of God and I'll be unstable in all my ways. I will also not allow double-mindedness or it will cause impurity in my heart. Instead, I will get the word in my mind and I will think on what it says so that I make the proper choices and speak right words, doing what God wants me to do. I will cast down every reasoning, anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. I will bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I will be ready to avenge the disobedient thoughts by being obedient to take my thoughts captive. I will only think on things that are true in line with the word, that are honorable, that are righteous, that are pure and holy, that are well-pleasing, that are of a good report, that have moral excellence, that bring praise unto the Lord. I will only think on those things. And as I am thinking upon the things of the word, God will keep me in perfect peace and I show I really trust in Him. I understand. As I'm thinking in my mind, so am I in my life. Therefore, I'm only going to have the Word of God in my mind and I will govern my mind from this day forward so I do not give place to the enemy in my mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You govern your mind, that's a big step towards walking in victory. You won't have this negative stuff coming out of your mouth. You won't be making mountains out of molehills. You won't be having negative attitudes and believing lies or get double-minded or get, you know, all this negative. You'd be guarding yourself so you don't sin. See, we can conquer all these things in our life. Get your mind in line. Get yourself in the Word. Be hearing the word continually. The word is full of power. It will do something in you. Get this word in you. Don't be one of those that goes off. You know, someone was telling me just today, well, I realize I haven't been in the word like I should be and I can see the effects in my life. Yeah, you will see the effects in your life. Mm -hmm. You need to be in the word every day. Remember, the, the word is like that manna. They went and gathered the manna every day. Well, you need to get the word in you every day. Remember, Job said, I count the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. Huh. 
Oh, it's more important than me getting my meal. Have you got your meal of the Word every day? You need to be eating the Word. Eat the Word. Keep that Word in you. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to enable you to keep your mind on the things of the Lord. And then God will do great works. Then you speak it. Then you do it. Then you pray it. And you watch God work mightily as you put the Word of God in operation. Father, I thank you for all you brought forth. We will be doers of the word, and we thank you that we are going to stop all this destruction coming into our mind. We're going to take every thought captive. We'll think only on good things, and we will govern our mind. Thank you that we are putting on the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ through the word and governing our mind, and we will then stay in perfect peace as we think on the right things and not give place to the enemy. Thank you for your word working mightily in our life as we're hearers and doers of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.